The Necessity of Religion, Part 4 We can see it in its effects. It is the great, greatest motive power that moves the human mind. No other idea can put into us the same mass of energy as the spiritual. So far as human history goes, it is obvious to all of us that this has been the case and that its powers are not dead. I do not deny that men on simply utilitarian grounds can be very good and moral. There have been many great men in this world perfectly sound, moral and good simply on utilitarian grounds. But the world movers, men who bring as it were a mass of magnetism into the world, whose spirit works in hundreds and in thousands, whose life ignites others with a spiritual fire, such men we always find have that spiritual background. Their motive power came from religion. Religion is the greatest motive power for realizing that infinite energy which is the birthright and nature of every man. In building up character in making for everything that is good and great, in bringing peace to others and peace to one's own self, religion is the highest motive power and therefore ought to be studied from that standpoint. Religion must be studied on a broader basis than formerly. All narrow, limited fighting ideas of religion have to go. All section ideas and tribal or national ideas of religion must be given up. That each tribe or nation should have its own particular god and think that every other is wrong is a superstition that should belong to the past. All such ideas must be abandoned. As the human mind broadens, its spiritual steps broaden too. The time has already come when a man cannot record a thought without its reaching to all corners of the earth. By merely physical means, we have come into touch with the whole world, so the future religions of the world have to become as universal as wide. The religious ideals of the future must embrace all that exists in the world, and is good and great, and at the same time, have infinite scope for future development. All that was good in the past must be preserved, and the doors must be kept upon for future additions to the already existing store. Religions must also be inclusive and not look down with contempt upon one another, because their particular ideas of God are different. In my life, I have seen a great many spiritual men a great many sensible persons who did not believe in God at all, that is to say, not in our sense of the world. Perhaps they understood God better than we can ever do. The personal idea of God or the impersonal, the infinite, moral law or the ideal man, these all have to come under the definition of religion. And when religions have become thus broadened, their power for good will have increased a hundredfold. Religions having tremendous power in them have often done more injury to the world than good, simply on account of their narrowness and limitations. Even at the present time, we find many sections and societies with almost the same ideas fighting each other because one does not want to set forth those ideas in precisely the same way as another. Therefore, religions will have to broaden. Religious ideas will have to become universal, vast and infinite, and then alone we shall have the fullest play of religion, for the power of religion has only just begun to manifest in the world. It is sometimes said that religions are dying out, that spiritual ideas are dying out of the world. To me it seems that they have just begun to grow. The power of religion, broadened and purified, is going to penetrate every part of human life. So long as religion was in the hands of a chosen few or of a body of priests, it was in temples, churches, books, dogmas, ceremonials, forms and rituals. But when we came to the real spiritual universal concept, then and then alone, religions will become real and living. It will come into our very nature, live in our every movement, penetrate every pore of our society and be infinitely more a power of for good than it has ever been before. What is needed is a fellow feeling between the different types of religion, seeing that they all stand or fall together. A fellow feeling that springs from mutual esteem and 
mutual respect and not the condescending patronizing niggardly expression of goodwill unfortunately in vogue at the present time with many and above all this is needed between types of religious expression coming from the study of mental phenomena unfortunately even now laying exclusive claim to the name of religion and those expressions of religion whose heads as it were are penetrating more into the secrets of heaven though their feet are clinging to earth i mean the so called materialistic sciences to bring about this harmony both will have to make concessions sometimes very large nay more sometimes painful but each will find itself the better for the sacrifice and more advanced in truth and in the end the knowledge which is confined within the domains of time and space will meet and become one with that which is beyond them both where the mind and senses cannot reach the absolute the infinite the one without a second